Tirandasya Gena Gena Shalakaya Chakshuram Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapalantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Jutapada Kamalang Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Lalita Tam Tam Sajibam Sadvaitam Sadvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vashakam Vitamscha हे कृष्णा करुणा शिंदो दिनाबंदो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कंता राधा कंता नवस्तुते तब तक अंचन गोरंगे राधे बिंदा बलिश्वरे विश्वानुस्ते देवे प्रणवामि हरि प्रिये वंचकाल पातरो व्यस्चा कि पासिंदु व्येवचा Padita nam papa devyo vaisnave vyo namo namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sade Gaura Bhakta Binda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this evening we're reading from the ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace. Chapter third, chapter 9, <coughs> The Most Confidential Knowledge. Text number 33. Kim, Kim. Punar, Punar, Brahmana, Brahmana Punya, 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 Bhakta, Bhakta Rajarasayas, Tata Anityam Asukam Lokam Imam Prapya Bajaspa Mam Kim Punar Brahmana Punya Bhaktara Jarsayas Tata Anityam Asukam Lokam Imam Prapya Bajaspamam Kim Punar Brahmana Punya Bhakta Rajar Sayasata Anityam Asukam Lokam Imam Prapya Bajaspamam Kim Punar Brahmana Punya Bhakta Rajar Sayastata Anityam Asukam Lokam Imam Prapya Bajaspamam Kim Punar Brahmana Punya Bhakta Rajar Sayastata Anityam Asukam Lokam Imam Prapyam Vajasvamam Kim Punar Brahmana Punya Bhakta Rajar Sayastata Anityam Asukam Lokam Imam Prapya Vajasvamam Matajis? Try? No more Bhagavad Gita? 
Give them back. Yeah, yeah, few more Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, there. Okay, give them, please. And you, you want to try? Yes. 33. 33. Kimpunar Brahman Punya. Brahma Yes? Kim Punar Brahmana Punya. Kim Punar Lokam. Imam Prapya Bajasvamam. Very good. Kim, how much? Punaha, again. Brahmana, Brahmanas. Punya, righteous. Bhakta, devotees. Raja Risaya, saintly kings. Tata, also. Anityam, temporary. Ashukam, full of miseries. Lokam, planet. Imam, this. Prapya, gaining. Bajasva, be engaged in loving service. Mam, unto me. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, ki joy. How much more this is so of the righteous Brahmanas, the devotees and the saintly kings. Therefore, having come to this temporary miserable world, engage in loving service unto me. Purport. In this material world, there are classifications of people, but after all, this world is not a happy place for anyone. It is clearly stated here, Anityam Ashukam Lokam. This world is temporary and full of miseries, not habitable for any sane gentleman. This world is declared by the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be temporary and full of miseries. Some philosophers, especially Mayavadi philosophers, say that this world is false. But we can understand from Bhagavad Gita that the world is not false. It is temporary. There is a difference between temporary and false. This world is temporary, but there is another world which is eternal. This world is miserable, but the other world is eternal and blissful. Arjuna was born in a saintly royal family. To him also the Lord says, quote, Take to my devotional service and come quickly back to Godhead, back home. Unquote. No one should remain in this temporary world, full as it is with miseries. Everyone should attach himself to the bosom of the Supreme Personality of Godhead so that he can be eternally happy. The devotional service of the Supreme Lord is the only process by which all problems of all classes of men can be solved. Everyone should therefore take to Krishna consciousness and make his life perfect. Hmm. Hmm. 
Kim punar brahmana punya bhakta rajar seyastata Anityam asukam lokam imam prapya bajas pamam How much more this is so of the righteous brahmanas and devotees the devotees and the saintly kings therefore having come to this temporary miserable world engage in loving service unto me so the supreme lord is talking to arjuna here asking him to get out of this material world and be engaged in loving service unto him go back home back to godhead as soon as possible there's a kind of urgency here uh, just like when Prabhupada was giving lectures if you hear his lectures in the early days in the early days of ISKCON in New York City uh, his lecture was uh, full of energy and there is an urgency coming from his voice that everyone should take up to the process of Krishna consciousness as soon as possible his Guru Maharaj says one time that this place is no place for a gentleman or gentlewoman for everyone because this is not our place of residence or habitat our original place is in the spiritual world hmm. because this place as it explains here in the poor port that uh, everyone would like to become happy but somehow this world is not a happy place for anyone just like a fish out of the water wants to be happy in the land there was one article like that in the BTG and there was a picture of a fish and the picture is being uh, depicted in such a way that the fish is being offered many many luxuries and many many kind of sense enjoyment but the fish is out of the water hmm? many many things but do you think the fish will be happy no only pluffing almost ready to die any moment so similarly somehow or other we have come in contact with the material energy because we wanted it as we've heard the other day uh, it is our choice and Krishna is so compassionate so merciful that whatever we desire Krishna fulfills hmm? that's why he is so complete uh, one may ask well if this place is full of miseries and temporary why will <coughs> Krishna give this to us if he is really God then he should not let us make a decision to come here he should not let us want to come and so-called enjoy this miserable place if he is God that is wrong that's why he is God he gives everything whatever we desire it's like a father of course the father will warn the child this is not good for you Hmm? but still at the same time okay if you wish you can have but you will learn your lesson so this material world is not meant for punishment uh, people condemn God what kind of God are you this is just full of miseries and suffering I'm not enjoying here I'm not happy here it is our choice that's why it says here it was quoted by Srila Prabhupada this place is full of miseries it is temporary and is full of miseries Supreme Lord declared that in the 8th chapter text 15 mam upetya punarjan ma dukalayam ashashvatam nat nubanti mahatmana samshidim parama gataha that this material world is temporary and is full of miseries however after attaining me after attaining Krishna those great souls who perform devotional service they never return back to this temporary world they learn their lessons 
But when do we, when are we gonna learn our lessons? Mahatmanas means special souls. Mahatma. They're great souls. Great souls because they understood the conclusion, surrender unto Krishna. But for us, we have not, we are still in the process of attaining the ultimate and we still not so much convinced, not 100%. We're still trying to become convinced by learning our lessons through experience. One can learn from hearing from the right source of the authorities, that is first class. Second class is after hearing, then you act. And third class is after hearing, you still don't act. Hmm? So the Mayavadis, they, they say that this material world is false. Hmm? This material world or the place where we are right now is false. Devotees don't say it is false. It is temporary. It is real. It is a fact. Uh, in the first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Janmadi Adiya Shataha, everything emanates from me. That means the absolute truth. Param Satcham Dimahe, that supreme absolute truth, is none other than Basudev or the son of Basudev, Krishna. Krishna. The son of Vasudev, his father is Vasudev, and his, fa and his name also is Vasudev, with a long A. So, the falsity here is that we want to become the proprietor, and that is false. We cannot be the proprietor. The proprietor is Krishna. First we want to become proprietor, we we, then we become to become the master, then we, become, we want to become the minister, then we want to become the president, then we want to become God. Mm? And that is false. We cannot, we cannot get that position. We cannot usurp, uh, that's the right word, we cannot usurp that position of Krishna being the ultimate proprietor. Hmm? Uh, I am the source of the material and spiritual world. Unfortunately, it is false if we try to take that position. The Mayavadis, they said that this material world, this creation, there is no source. Therefore, it is false. But it is not false. It is real. Hmm? It's like this room. Is this room false or real? Otherwise, we'll not be able to utilize this for Bhagavad Gita class. Right? Otherwise, we don't, we, actually, we don't exist here also. Because this doesn't exist. Hmm. This is the, the Mayavad fa false uh, uh, identification. The meaning of false falsity is that to give meaning to which does not exist and giving its name. That is falsity. It's like uh, eggs of the horse or mm, horns of the rabbits or uh, flower garden in the sky. Hmm? There are such words like that, but it doesn't exist, right? The, does the uh, horse give eggs, lay eggs? No. Does uh, bunnies or rabbits have horns? Horn-like, right? Their, their, their ears, but it's not. Or flower in the sky, there's no such thing like that. Hmm? So the Mayavadis, 
their philosophy is like this that this world is force uh, jagan mitya but we understand from bhagavad gita the world is not false it is temporary yes this world is temporary because it manifest it create is created there is a creator secondary creator lord brahma and then after some time it will be annihilated by lord shiva is being maintained by lord vishnu and then it's a cycle it's like time winter spring summer fall hmm? it's like very soon it'll be springtime basan panchami in few days time and saturday uh, and then after some time we'll feel the summer again here in Vrindavan when May comes or April May, June, July and then rainy season again and then Kartik time it'll become a little bit chilly again and then December so it is eternal it comes and go it is temporary but it is not false so this is the uh, fal falsity of the Mayavadis, the fallacy, the fallacy of Mayavadis false identification. That this world, yes, because this world is miserable and it's temporary, that's why because we are uh, spirit souls, Ananda Maya Vyasa, this is our nature, to be happy. Mm. To be always happy, not just only in the weekends. Hmm? Many people, they think happiness is only in the weekends. And then uh, five days they have to work so hard and they don't even want to exist within those five days. And for them, they're always wanting for holidays or vacations. Thinking that, you know, when I go vacation, I'll be able to forget everything, all my miseries, all my problems. They drown themselves with so many intoxications and artificial means just to forget everything. And then when Monday comes, ah, back to reality again. That they cannot escape. So that is not real happiness. Real happiness means taking up to devotional service. When Krishna is happy, one will become happy. Mm. That's why the Acharyas, they told us, don't spend your time here too long. As soon as possible, get out of this place. We've mentioned this uh, before again, just like if you go to the latrine, you do your business and get out of it as soon as possible. <laughs> you go to the latrine, you've done your business, do you stay there the whole day? <laughs> huh? No way. It's too, it's too filthy, too smelly. <laughs> you got to get out of here as soon as possible. A material world is like that. We just have to realize it we have to hear from the right source and we don't have to do experiment we have experienced this in so many lifetimes in so many species of life birth after birth but now we have this human form of life again just take advantage of it and get out of here as soon as possible we're so fortunate we have given all these facilities uh, by having come in contact with this uh, Hare Krishna movement, this International Society for Krishna Consciousness, devotional service can easily be performed. Hmm? That's why it says that devotional service is susukam kartaham avyayam. This is happily, enjoyable, joyfully performed. It's everlasting and is joyfully performed. So, irregardless of one's position, there's no such thing as disqualification. In any classes in the society, one can take part of this. Especially Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he made it so easy, the age of Kali. In previous ages, you have to perform so much austerities. Perform thousands and thousands of years of meditation. Uh, 
expensive um, paraphernalias for performing yagya or be able to perform archa bigra worship of the deities in kali yuga we don't need anything we don't there is no uh, what you call uh, capital no money needed no not much austerity a little bit of sacrifice it's only the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which is the greatest sacrifice in the age of Kali. So it's really up to us. Um, Kali Yuga is uh, the worst of the ages. Uh, but still at the same time, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made it in such a way that this is what he called the Golden Age. Uh, Anyone who will take part in the Sankirtan Yagya, then everything is easy in Kali Yuga. Anyone who's not in part or taking part in the Sankirtan movement, then everything is so difficult. There's a statement that anyone who takes part into the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, the process that's been uh, given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even the most difficult thing becomes easy. Now, if one is not wanting to take advantage of this process, even the most easiest becomes the most difficult. Hmm? So how much more do we need? We don't need really anything except to take everything we can in order for us to go back home, back to Godhead, as soon as possible. All we need to do is just hang on to the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada and those who follow in his footsteps. Hmm? It says here, everyone should attach himself to the bosom of the Supreme Personality of Godhead so he can be eternally happy. And Srila Prabhupada is on the bosom of Lord Krishna. Always. So if we hang out into his dhoti or into his lotus feet, we are connected. Or those who hang on to Srila Prabhupada, we connect to them. This is what he called Guru Parampara. Disciplic succession. So Srila Prabhupada is so merciful. It's not not so easy for him also at the age of 69 crossing the uh, Atlantic Ocean coming to the West just for this sacrifice the advanced devotees they have they feel compassion this is their mercy towards the conditioned souls they don't they don't care of, of any circumstances, any obstacles that they may face in order to relieve the suffering conditioned souls and bring them to the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. For them, this is Krishna's mercy. As, as uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, every um, difficulties that I face in Krishna consciousness, is, I feel them as my ecstasy. They feel that this is like mercy and blessings from the Supreme Lord. So devotional service of the Supreme Lord is the only process by which all problems of all classes of men can be solved. Nowhere you can find this statement that only through bhakti, everything is being accomplished in one shot. Hmm? Prabhupada gave us an assurance. Only we have to do is just follow the process that's been chalked out the, by the previous acharyas. And nevertheless, otherwise we cannot be happy in this world. There was one story of Indra. Indra is the king in the heavenly planets. He has that throne. But he displays his uh, guru, Brihaspati. 
Brihaspati is the guru of the demigods. So Brihaspati, he uh, cursed, he condemned, he cursed Indra to become a pig, a hog. Hmm? And uh, so Indra was playing with his little piggies and with his piggy wife. And you know what? As a pig, where do they play? In the mud. They play in very filthy place. And they're very fat. What do they eat? They eat stool. This is their happiness. You've seen them in action here in Vrindavan as well. Right? You've seen them in the streets where there's a lot of, you know, canal, very dirty, but they like that. And they will eat the dirt. Even there's no food there, they still eat those, those, those uh, dirt. And they will eat their own stool, they will, they will do all this nonsense. They will have sex with their children or with their sisters, whatever. They don't know the difference. So Brahma, he has to come down. Because the, the seat of uh, the king of the heaven has been vacant for so long. So he told Indra, get out of that position. You have to come back to your post as the king of the heaven. Otherwise, there'll be trouble in the heavens. And Indra says, me? I'm not Indra. I'm a pig. I like my, I like my, I am enjoying. I'm enjoying with my piggies, little piggies. <laughs> I'm enjoying with my piggy wife. I'm enjoying the stool here. What do you mean? I don't want to go back to become a King Indra. <coughs> so this is our position. Our position is, we don't want to go back home, back to Godhead. Material existence means forgetfulness of Krishna. Hmm? And this is our main disease. We have, we have forgotten Krishna. Just like King Indra. We identify with this body. I am such and such person. I live in this place. These are my friends. These are my loved ones. This is my nationality. I am this body and I extend my enjoyment through my family. Why are you bothering me? If we tell others about this, this is sometimes we hear this. You bother others. I'm enjoying my life. Is this real enjoyment? Like King Indra? Of course not. That is what you call maya. That is what you call illusion. That is what you call that which is not. So, we're so fortunate. We cannot, we cannot understand how, what kind of fortune we are having in our hands right now. If, we're, if you have a very valuable gem, you have to take care of it. That it will not get lost or stolen. Hmm? You don't want to... If you have a valuable gem, you just don't put it in the, in the side and uh, be careless. You value it. You have to really value it so much so that you, you have to like keep it so tightly. And use it accordingly. Hmm? Again, the pigs, you know, you give them uh, pearls. For them, pearls is nothing. They will crunch them. Mm. They will eat them into crunch. Because it's nice and crunchy. But it's not. That is not meant for just that. So similarly, we have to really value this. And it becomes more valuable what we have if we share them to others. If we share them with others. It becomes more valuable. What you have right now is so valuable. And what it will make it more valuable. And Krishna will give you more of what you have 
when you give them to others you will not it will be always replenished much much more mm -hmm. the problem here is that we're, we're thinking oh if I give this up and I just surrender unto Krishna if I give up my attachments material attachments then uh, I think nothing will be left for me uh -uh. Prabhupada he came to America with only what 40 rupees seven dollars he ended up with thousands of crores hmm? how much more this is priceless money is not the question here money cannot make us happy love is the one that can make us happy love of Krishna that is that is the the ultimate the ultimate goal so there is no problem, the only problem is ourselves. We're not really taking advantage of this and uh, we don't want to utilize everything to the highest limit, to the fullest extent. And Krishna consciousness is like this. The more you have, the more Krishna will give. The more love you have, the more Krishna will give more love. The more you have love for Krishna, yaya tamam prapajyante tam sataiva bhajamiham. As they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly, and reciprocally they become happy. We mentioned this before, the happiness of the gopis when they see Krishna. And Krishna, when they see the gopis, Krishna's happiness increases. But then, when Krishna's happiness, increase, happiness increases, the happiness of the gopis increases much more. So who is more happier? Krishna or the gopis? The gopis. The happiness of Krishna depends on the happiness of the gopis. Hmm? Krishna is happy when he sees the happiness of the gopis. And the gopis reciprocally, they increase the more the happiness by seeing Krishna happy. So gopis are always happy, more happier than Krishna. Because it is Krishna who gives them the happiness. So it is like this. The more we serve the Supreme Lord, especially uh, when we tell this to others, this knowledge, as Krishna says, there is no one more dear to me than those who give this knowledge to others. So this is our process. Miseries is not there. You will not find miseries in the... There is no such thing as miseries in the devotees. The only miseries they have is that they cannot find more engagement. <laughs> that 24 hours is not enough. That is their miseries. The miseries of the materialists is they cannot fulfill their senses. Enjoy the sense enjoyment is not satisfying. That is their miseries. The miseries of the devotees is they cannot find ways how to please Krishna the most. They want to, to please Krishna the most, that's why they are thinking, Oh, I think Krishna is not that happy yet. That is their miseries. Even though Krishna is already happy with what they're doing, still they are feeling miserable. In anxiety that Krishna is not happy. It's like Mother Yasoda. Mother Yasoda is always in anxiety. Mm, as we mentioned this earlier, the spiritual world means Vaikuntha, but there is so much anxiety there. How to please Krishna? Not to please themselves, but that kind of anxiety is wanted and that kind of anxiety is healthy. That kind of anxiety actually is their source of happiness. Mm? That is real happiness. When one is in anxiety for Krishna, that is what you call bliss. That is real happiness. When one is in anxiety. Materialists cannot understand this. Only devotees can understand. So how much more this is so of the righteous brahmanas and devotees and the saintly kings. 
Therefore, having come to this temporary miserable world, engage in loving service unto me. Get out of this world and go back home, back to Godhead, ASAP. That means as soon as possible. <laughs> okay, we'll stop here. Any questions? Just a comment. Okay, comment, sir. A comment, um, you know, um, you mentioned about the Mahavadi philosophy. Yes. That this world is uh, false and yeah. it doesn't exist. Um, it means for them they don't exist as well. So it if they say they don't exist, whatever they say doesn't exist as well. So yeah. can you argue that point on that? Yeah, they, they see they say they they said that this world this this world is false, but then they then and they don't they don't find any happiness. That's why they engage in philanthropic work, and engaging in philanthropic work means there is some substance. There is there is some objective to please others. It's like feed the poor or build hospital for the sick, or give clothes to the no clothes. So that means your philanthropic work also is false. Why should I accept it? Hmm? Whatever you're saying, if everything is false, and whatever you're saying is false also, so why should I listen to you? Hmm. There's a lot of fallacy. Sila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, he defeated them. He, he, has some, he wrote a hundred uh, arguments how to defeat them, and also uh, his Guru Maharaj, Bhakti, um, uh, the, the disciple of uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, Bhakti Pragya Kesha Maharaj, the uh, Guru, Sanyas Guru of Srila Prabhupada, God brother of Srila Prabhupada. But we are not interested in learning Mayavad philosophy. <laughs> We're interested in learning Bhakti. Because if you, if you are eager to understand the Mayavad philosophy, you'll get carried away and you'll become a Mayavadi. Yeah, we're wasting our time. We don't want to waste our time knowing more of the... You just have to... If you understand Bhakti, you understand everything. If you try to understand Mayavad, you may not be able to become a devotee. You'll become a mayavadi. <coughs> so it's a danger. Yes? So you're saying that this world is temporary? Yes. And the identification with the body is illusion? Yes. What, is that all that is maya or what else is maya? That you think that you belong here. This is not your place of residency. I mean, this material world, Vrindavan is your place of home. To think like that is true, it's real. To think that's like, you know, there's a false identification of being the proprietor. That I am, I am the cause of everything. What, what is happening, it is due to me, I am in control. That is false. Krishna is a supreme controller. We are controlled, Krishna is the greatest, we are small. To think that the small can become the greatest, that is false. To understand that we are small, that is true. To understand Krishna is great, that is true. But to, to, to realize that someday I'll become the greatest, that is false. That is illusion. It's not going to happen. A drop of ocean cannot become the whole ocean. Hmm? Okay. So we stop here. Okay. Thank you very much. Sila Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna. Danyabad. Okay. See if we can.